as um, any art department, we always wanted to invent something new for ourselves and for our users. Because it's, you know, fun just to make something new. Hand-painted textures created manually by our artists fill the game with an altogether different feel from one that comes from texture generation. Generated textures have a much more limited color range, not to mention that when an artist is painting something with their hands, they're pouring their heart and soul into it. And because of this extra work, the whole game ends up being a lot more evocative and heartfelt, I guess. We decided not to overhaul the pipeline that we had and simply made some upgrades instead. We kept the hand-painted textures and made use of normal and roughness maps alongside diffuse maps to have more detail and make the materials more appealing and interesting. When we needed to combine, say, more matte surfaces with glossier ones, we would add some glow, etc. In our first game, there was uh, this, you know, artful, um, painty look of textures, uh, environment, and everything. And in our second game, we wanted to, you know, invent something, add something to that approach. Physically based rendering is the approach when all materials functioned like uh, real materials, like, you know, wood, plastic, metal, just like the real one, which you can see in the real world. And the challenge was to combine it with art look, you know, this paint look, like real painting. In Pathfinder Kingmaker, we have managed to create a homely, intimate feel. And the whole story, the whole journey ended up having this really cozy mood to it. In our new project, we wanted to present a completely different story, a darker, gloomier one and it made an impact on the game's art style. We used desaturated, more reserved and muted colors. We also tried not to exaggerate the geometry of objects as much, trying to make them less cartoony. My favorite feature in our game, which we promised you uh, on our Kickstarter campaign, is dismembering. Dismembering is quite you know, hard thing in terms of technologies, because we need to cut all types of creatures uh, in our game, and they are quite different. They have tails, horns, wings, uh, sometimes they have tentacles. We develop in this technology right now, and it's quite successful, and I really, really like it. For our new project, we have significantly increased the size of each character's puppet. Now the players can examine character models in much greater detail. We're using textures with higher resolution and a more detailed geometry. Even when the characters are using old designs and outfits, they look completely different. Besides considerably expanding character customization in terms of familiar options like hairstyles, beards and skin color, we have also added war paint, culturally specific paint and scars. Back when we were getting started on Kingmaker, we decided that all art should be done exclusively by our artists. The designers would send us blank sets of blocks that we would then cover with our artistic solutions, and everything was being put together entirely in Maya and Photoshop. We made this decision precisely so we could polish every centimeter and have complete control. On a 50 by 50 map, which was the smallest map size, we would put an 8K by 8K pixels PSD. It was this layer cake of texture-filled terrains that we had carefully revealed with masks in Photoshop to create the best three-dimensional surface possible. It was a painstaking process. So when we began working on the second game, we stepped away from this pipeline of working in Maya and put the whole thing in Unity. In Pathfinder Game Maker, uh, all areas was created like one big chunk of uh, mesh. Uh, it was really huge. In uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, we recreate this thing completely. Now we are trying to make all small pieces for locations separately, like carpet or wall or floor. For example, we can easily mix cobblestones with snow, and the heat map allows us to tune it so that our snow fills the cracks between the stones. And on another map, we can replace the snow with sand, dirt, anything really. 
We switched from working in Maya to Unity, which let us both build more interesting landscapes for outdoor areas and use construction sets to create complex architecture, which we have plenty of in the game. And we use these sets both for outdoor locations, such as fortresses and temple compounds, and indoor areas, our dungeons, including caves. Those were all assembled by using these sets too. One of the most important aspects of any game is lighting. It's a crucial part of every frame, every scene or cutscene. Our approach to lighting has remained practically unchanged since the days of Pathfinder Kingmaker. But a big upside of our new project is that we can use more point light sources. We can place them to paint the scene and create the mood we want. In Pathfinder Kingmaker, almost all lighting was baked. So it wasn't dynamic. Uh, this means when your character just walks through this light, you can't see any effect on him because your character is a dynamic object. Dynamic light is work with uh, any objects in frames, including dynamic objects like character, like uh, visual effect, so weapon, anything. You can see with dynamic light this uh, little glossy thing, the speculars, the depth of surface, this playful little speculars on the wet surface with dynamic light. With Bake It Like, it's just impossible. In our previous project, Pathfinder Kingmaker, we already had weather. But in the new game, we have created a very powerful, complex weather system. We can use it to create any weather, from a light drizzle to a blizzard. We can make some more wild madness in our weather in game. We will do the types of weather for demonic locations. And I think you really like it. have more to tell you about our development process, so stay tuned and subscribe to our channel.